So in this video, we're going to go through four more examples of rearranging formulae. And in this video, they're going to get quite tough. So first one, 1 over p take away 1 over q is equal to 1 over x. We want to make q the subject. Now, just as we've done in previous videos, we want to get rid of those fractions. So I'm going to multiply through by the denominators. But we haven't looked at the example where there have been three fractions before. So I'm going to do this step by step, but you could do this all in one go if you were confident in doing that. I'm going to multiply through by p, then q, then x. So you could, in one go, multiply through by pqx, for example. Okay? So multiply through by p. 1 over p will just be 1. Take away, multiplying this fraction by p just affects the numerator, remember, so we're going to get p over q. And multiplying this one top and bottom by, sorry, multiplying it by p will get us p over x. It just affects the top, okay? Just affects the numerator. Okay, so now we're going to multiply everything through by q. So 1 times q is q. Multiplying this by q gets us just the p. And multiplying this by q gets us pq over x. Now I'm going to multiply everything through by x. So I'm going to get qx take away px is equal to pq. Now again, you could have gone straight from that line to that line by multiplying everything through by pqx. Now we want to isolate the q. So I'm going to subtract pq from both sides and add px to both sides. So I get both terms on the left-hand side with q as a factor. I can factor out the q. So x take away p, lots of q is px. And then divide both sides by the bracket. So q is px over x take away p. OK, and that's our first one. Right, number two. We have p squared equals q take away 2p. Now, it doesn't really look too complicated, this one. Let's get all the p's onto the left-hand side. So add 2p to both sides. So p squared plus 2p is equal to q. But then we're stumped using our current methods. Uh, because if I try and factorise the left-hand side, I'm going to get p times p plus 2. And then I can't isolate the p that way. So factorising is out. Can't do that. I'm actually going to use completing the square. Now, we haven't met completing the square yet in the playlist because the specification is sometimes in a bit of a weird order. It's not necessarily the teaching order. So if you haven't met completing the square before with quadratics, then you might want to look ahead and have a go. Um, and look through that first. Or alternatively, if you have met completing the square before, you should be able to follow along. So p squared plus 2p. Completing the square, we're going to open up a bracket and put in p. And then we halve the coefficient of p, so 1, squared. And then take away the square of this number. So 1 squared is just 1. And that's equal to the q. So you might want to convince yourself that that left-hand side is identical to the left-hand side here. P plus 1 squared is P plus 1 times P plus 1. And we've got the takeaway 1. P times P. P times 1. 1 times P. 1 times 1. And we've got the minus 1. Also plus 1. So the 1's cancel. And I've got P squared plus 2P, which is identical to that left-hand side. So I haven't changed anything. I've just written the left-hand side in a different format which allows me to isolate the p. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides, then square root both sides. Now that's going to bring in a plus minus, and then subtract 1 from both sides. Now where you place the subtract 1, or the minus 1, um, is really up to you. You could put it here, Or you could have written plus minus square root of q plus 1, take away 1. That would have been fine. The reason why I put it there is to remind you completing the square is linked to the quadratic formula. You could have used the quadratic formula here. 
okay, to solve that quadratic. Um, I personally would prefer just to use completing the square like this, but um, it's nice to know that the quadratic formula is there if we need it. The quadratic formula, of course, is derived from completing the square. So um, it is just really completing the square, just like the, the final output. Right, let's look at number three. We have x squared plus q is equal to 2qx plus p squared. And we want to isolate the x. OK. So let's subtract 2qx from both sides. And subtract q from both sides. Oh, subtract. There we go. OK, so now we're at this stage, that left-hand side is very much the same as we had in the previous example um, where I completed the square. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing now. I can't factor the x out without bringing in a bracket of x take away 2q, which isn't going to get me anywhere. So completing the square is the way forward. So open up a bracket, have x. Then we want to halve the coefficient here, so take away p, uh, sorry, take away q, reading my handwriting, take away q, uh, then squared, then take away this value squared, so take away q squared. So that is identical to that left-hand side, okay? And that's equal to p squared take away q. So, then add the q squared to both sides. So p squared plus q squared take away q. We can then square root both sides. So x take away q is equal to plus or minus the square root of p squared plus q squared take away q. And then add the q to both sides. OK, and there we have our answer. OK. Right, last one. Number four. P plus the square root of P is equal to Q. Now, this looks quite innocuous, doesn't it? Um, doesn't look like it's going to be too bad. Uh, we've got p's, the, what we want to isolate. They're both on the left-hand side. Seems like an advantage to us. Um, but unfortunately, there's not much I can do. You could, because essentially we need to get rid of that square root sign. You could square root both, sorry, square both sides now. Um, I would avoid that, because it's going to leave you with square root symbols anyway. Um, so I would avoid. Instead, the first step I'm going to do is actually subtract P from both sides. Now, this seems like a strange move because I'm now getting P on both sides of the equation. But actually, this is so I can now square both sides. Squaring both sides now is much easier than it would have been in that first step. Because the left-hand side squares to make P. The right-hand side, Q take away P, gets squared. And so, um, well, let's leave it like that. What I can do is I can then expand that bracket out. Q squared take away PQ, take away another PQ, plus P squared. So take away 2PQ, and then I've got the plus P squared. Now remember, we want to isolate the P. So now, I'm going to take Q squared from both sides and take P from both sides. I'm just going to reorder the terms as well. We've got P squared, take away 2, 2PQ, two and I've taken P from both sides. Okay, so I've just done a little bit of rearranging now. Now, 
What I'm aiming for is to complete the square again on the right hand side. I don't want to do it just yet. I want to factorise these two terms first. So minus q squared is equal to p squared, and I'm going to factor out um, minus p. So take away 2q plus 1, lots of p. Right, now I can complete the square on that right-hand side. We've got the minus q squared on the left. Right, p, then take away half of the coefficient, half, the, half of this. So take away q plus a half. So I've halved each of those terms, squared, and take away that term squared. So I've now completed the square. I'm going to add this term over to the left-hand side. Like so. Now if I expand out this bracket, I'm going to get q squared plus a half q plus a half q, so plus one lot of q, plus a quarter, and I'm taking away q squared, so I know that those two terms are going to cancel. And I've got p take away q plus a half squared on the right-hand side. Now I can square root both sides. So that's going to bring in a plus minus, and the two terms I've got left are the q plus a quarter. And that's going to be equal to p take away. Now I'll remove the brackets now, I think. So I'll have take away q, take away a half. Because remember, that minus 1 is working all the way through that bracket. Then, if I write the p now on the left-hand side, so I'm just going to rearrange this. So p equals add the q, add the half to the other side. So q plus a half plus or minus the square root of q plus a quarter. And now I'm done. So this was definitely the toughest one so far. Um, and you can see that it brings together a whole host of skills. Uh, from understanding that rearranging to get the square root equals first was a good idea, squaring both sides rearranging one side in order to complete the square and then knowing to expand brackets to make your answer as simplified as possible. So many skills there that you, in some cases you're probably going, well, how did I know to do that? How did I know that that would help? Um, and it all comes down to practice. I've done so many of these um, that you know, I haven't tried these ones before, um, but I've, tr I've done so many previously that I know what's going to happen, okay? The, well, not all the time, but um, I can, I've got all that experience now. Oh, actually, if I get it into this form, I can do this. Oh, I, if I get it looking like this, I can complete the square. Oh, I've got a square root in there. Probably best if I get everything equal to the square root, then I can square both sides. Okay, I've seen these problems before, and so I can bring all of that together on the day. Okay, so really it's all about practice, practice, practice.